Hello and welcome to my closet again. Uh, today we'll be dealing with a problem of reported speech. Actually, problems related to reported speech. Omova zależna. Uh, reported speech is not tested in the English Olympics nearly as often as the other problems I've discussed so far. And uh, when it is tested, it's never in a form that's as straightforward as the things that you normally deal with in your high school, Polish high school, um, English classroom. And uh, if you need to get updated on both the basics and the more complex aspects of um, reported speech, sequence of tenses and indirect questions, uh, then I'd like to advise you to check out the links included in the descriptions to this video. Uh, now, they will take you to my previous videos, earlier videos I made in uh, the Polish language, so that might help a little bit, uh, about just those things. And in the meantime, um, I'll try to um, like sort you out with the basics here and now. So, uh, the most important thing to remember is uh, that when you've got a sentence, meaning zdanie złożone, and uh, one of the clauses in it is the main clause, zdanie główne, and the other one is uh, the subordinate clause, meaning zdanie podrzędne, uh, then um, if the main clause has got a past tense used in it, uh, it will influence the tense in the subordinate clause. So, um, it's the first time I've been to London, but it was the first time I'd been to London. Um, I'm going to sell my car so that the police won't give me any more tickets, but I sold my car so that the police wouldn't give me any more tickets. Uh, take a sweatshirt in case you get cold, but I took a sweatshirt in case I got cold. I hope you see how it works, and I hope you understand how it actually has something to do with reported speech. Uh, because in reported, it's in reported speech that we say things like uh, I have a headache, but he said he had a headache. Yeah, um, I will help you, but he promised that he would help me. Okay, so the same rule applies to uh, not just reported speech, but any situation in which you've got uh, a sentence with a main clause in, the, in a past tense, and a subordinate clause that is influenced by that past tense in the main clause. Yeah, things like it looks as if it's going to rain or it looked as, it, as if uh, it was going to rain. So that's the first important thing. The other one is uh, the word order in indirect questions. Indirect questions, uh, again, something to do with reported speech. So, uh, how old are you? But she wanted to know how old I was, not was I. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be as straightforward as that, because um, you can say things like, please tell me how old you are, or I'd like to know how old you are, or um, um, if you don't mind my asking, I'd like to know how old you are. So not how old are you. Um, so what happens here is that the question is not direct anymore, uh, it becomes a subordinate clause, zdanie podrzędne, and um, subordinate clauses never have the question of word order, or word order typical of uh, regular questions or straightforward questions. So, uh, where do you live? But um, I hope you don't mind me asking where you live. No do, right? Uh, why did you do it? Uh, or I'd like to know why you did it. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, if you don't, I suggest you check out my other videos uh, mentioned in the description. And now, uh, is, it's the, well, the time has come to just have a look at the examples I've selected from uh, Mrs. Krzyżano <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Krzyżanowski's tests. So, uh, robiło się ciemno, więc zdecydowaliśmy, że pojedziemy na miejsce następnego ranka. Um, it was getting late, so we decided we would visit the site the next morning, or the following morning. Um, so, we would, not we will, uh, because it's a subordinate clause, and the tense in the main clause, it was getting late, uh, just makes it unable 
for you to use a can. <clears throat> and also the next morning or the following morning, uh, because we always use uh, that determiner, the, uh, when we're talking about past events or the future seen from the past. So that would thing and that the next morning thing or the following morning um, phrase, uh, other requirements like the basic requirements um, uh, that you probably know from your English classes. Uh, the next one is also pretty straightforward uh, compared to some of the rest. So how often did you hear residents complain about the show, Mr. Mayor? Why don't you ask them yourself? So the mayor wouldn't tell reporters how often he had heard residents complain and he told them to ask them themselves. Yeah, how often, not, not, not did he hear or had he heard, but he had heard. So first of all, there's that sequence of tenses. So uh, one thing is prior or happened prior to the other one. Uh, and we have to make a point of that. Uh, and also the word order is not a typical straightforward question order. It has to be just like a regular sentence um, because of the fact that it's a subordinate clause. Niepewne ile to może trwać, Dani zasugerował. Czwarta po południu. So this one is not as straightforward. Um, unsure how long it could take, Danny suggested 4 p.m. Uh, so Danny suggested 4 p.m. because he was unsure how long it could take. Okay, so not can take now, but it could take back then. Uh, and I understand that being Polish, um, you have problems with this type of logic, but seeing as uh, the whole situation happened in the past and the main clause is in a past tense, the subordinate clause also has to um, reflect that. So, how long it could take. Your dentist failed to spot the decay in Amy's tooth. It's hardly possible, said Dr. Lowe. So, uh, Dr. Lowe was bewildered how Amy's dentist could have failed to see uh, decay in her tooth. Or something similar. So, um, how Amy's dentist could have failed to see, no, could Amy's dentist have failed to see, uh, or anything like that. For the obvious reasons, I'm sure. I mean, reasons that should be obvious by now. <clears throat> uh, that study found that nearly two thirds of the students disliked or strongly disliked being called on in front of the class. Now you might wonder, what does it all have to do with reported speech? Now, um, maybe not reported speech as such, but uh, the general English logic of seeing things. Um, the study found, or found out something that was true at the time of a study. So uh, we, we're not sure whether the students still like or dislike uh, being called on in front of a class. Uh, back then, they either disliked it or strongly disliked it. Um, so, yeah, again, um, my earlier videos um, uh, that you can find by clicking the links uh, that you can find in, in the description uh, will tell you more about that. So, uh, czy rodzice pytali, czemu koncert był tak kiepsko przygotowany? Uh, did the parents ask why the concert was so poorly prepared. Not why was the concert so poorly prepared. Once again, because it's not a direct question. And last but not least, one more indirect question. Czyż te wszystkie komentarze pod twoim najnowszym wpisem nie pokazują wyraźnie, jak głęboki jest ten podział? So it actually does start with a direct question. Don't all these comments under your latest post clearly show how deep the divide is. So no, not how deep is the divide and the question mark that has to go um, at the end of that sentence is connected with the direct question uh, that you start your sentence with. But then uh, you're, you, you had to cope with uh, a subordinate clause, zdanie podrzędne, and that is never um, 
something that looks like a normal question. So uh, how deep the divide is, just like in I wonder how old you are. I hope that's logical. If it's not, check out my earlier videos. Okay, thank you very much for your, for your attention and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.